Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about our old friends, Simax and Selank, which at first glance may sound like the name of partners in a New York City law firm. However, these are two compounds very popular in the nootropics space, but in fact, they are actually two very fascinating peptides predominantly studied and trialed in Russia. We talked about Simax before, but that was on my old microphone, which was pretty much equivalent to a sweet potato. If you're new here, here's your friendly reminder to like and subscribe. Now back to Simax. It's a peptide used subcutaneously or intranasally that has been the subject of a decent amount of Russian research. It's a synthetic analog of a component of adrenocorticotropic hormone or ACTH. And although the role of the peptide is not particularly replicate that of ACTH, it is primarily studied for its neuroprotective effects. Hence why it's been evaluated in the setting of TIA or transient ischemic attack, i.e. mini stroke and stroke itself. Essentially, in its use context, Simax mechanistically increases expression of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF, as well as its signaling receptor in the hypothalamus. BDNF has shown to maintain health of neurons, their growth and differentiation, as well as learning and memory through its involvement in neuroplasticity and synaptogenesis. Presence of BDNF has shown to correlate with post-stroke recovery and in addition to quite possibly being involved in mood regulation and other neurologic and cognitive processes. It seems most of the data stems from its evaluation of brain injury, i.e. stroke and TBI, and I'd like to see more research in humans to justify how and why it should be utilized. And for those who want a little bit more substance about Simax, the full deep dive we did on the topic will be in the description below. Now let's get a little bit nerdy about Selank. It's a modified version of the Tufsin peptide with three amino acids tagged onto it. Tufsin is is a small peptide founded and initially developed at Tufts University. While Tufsin has been seen to be involved with certain processes, Selank is thought to act as both an anxiolytic to remove anxiety and as a nootropic. Tufsin is a small peptide analog of immunoglobulin G. Immunoglobulin G, or IgG, is the antibody most present in our circulation. One of the roles of antibodies is to bind pathogens invading our physiology and thus they are crucial to the immune response. Spots. Tufsin, the peptide analogous to this antibody, has shown an ability to act on the immune system as well, and is thought to augment certain parts of the immune response by recruiting certain cell types involved. So although there are overlapping effects among Selank and Tufsin, naturally, let's move on and get to talking about this interesting Russian peptide. So it was developed by the Institute of Molecular Genetics of the Russian Academy of Sciences. And like Simax, Selank modulates expression of BDNF which is thought to be key to how and why it works. There is a fun-loving study where they took a bunch of rats and to one group fed them only alcohol. They gave all these rats Selank, and the ones who weren't on a booze-only diet, they showed cognitive enhancement, while the ones who only consumed ethanol showed decreased withdrawal-mediated disturbances in attention and memory. So it doesn't particularly show that, hey, Selank increases BDNF and all these different compartments of the brain, but it's thought to be influenced by Selank-induced regulation of BDNF, or restoration to adequate levels, while adjunctively enhancing cognition. Its role as an anxiolytic is thought to be through its modulation of GABA receptors, and as such it's seen to have a benzodiazepine-like response and it's theorized that through its binding to GABA, it may increase efficacy of some other anxiolytics as well. There have been some human studies. In a small one, when compared to a benzodiazepine, Selank more prominently decreased anxiety within the patients in its test group. In another smaller study as well, Selank administration seemed to decrease anxiety in individuals, some who were notably quick responders, than others who had a slower disintegration of generalized anxiety symptoms. And Although unconfirmed, it's thought to play a role in balance of monoamine neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, which help facilitate mood and cognition. Now, as usual with these peptides, as I'm sure you've heard in pretty much all of my videos, when it comes to long-term use and side effect profiles, I would love to see more data really outlining the risks, benefits, adverse effects, as I certainly have questions about 
how these peptides that influence the chemistry of our brain could affect people on an individual basis. Because if we're modulating the release of neurochemicals in our brain, things like dopamine and serotonin, which are so closely tied to how we feel and how we act as a result, could this influence people negatively? Additionally, are the trials involving rodents that assessed cognition translational to humans? That said, I am very curious to learn more about peptides that could possibly benefit stroke victims, as this is very deleterious disease state that is oftentimes accompanied by detrimental life-changing outcomes. That's just where I stand. All in all, I hope you enjoyed this video, found it educational, helpful, or you just completely repulsed it. It's all okay with me. Just leave me a like and subscribe if you did enjoy, and I will speak with you soon. You all have a great day.